everybody. Lisa here again with another Vera Bradley bag of the day. Well, um, I recently did a video on the quick draw bag, um, the first one that I got, which was in Floral Nightingale. And I did mention that I had ordered another one and I wanted to talk about pattern placement on this bag um, because I think it's, it can be a big factor. And so since the second bag came in, uh, the other day and I washed it and I just used it today. This was my bag of the day. I thought I would do another video and then I also wanted to talk about just patterns in general and show the um, second, just a handful of patterns that, that feel, they're not they're not related so much in that they you know uh, look exactly alike but their rendering falls into a certain like category for me, and I think that's why I like them so much. So I just wanted to talk about them. Just three patterns, three or four, three patterns, um, and one of them is on the second um, packable tote that I ordered. <laughs> so I recently was raving about the packable line in a video, and I wanted to talk about that the packable tote again because. Um, because of the straps. I had a different experience with the straps this time and I think it's because I did something different with the bag so I thought I would mention that because in my previous video I was talking about how the straps are very slippery. But first, just to start, this is the bag of the day and my second um, quick draw bag and the pattern is Mocha Rouge. I did write down the years here. This is fall uh, 2011 and Floral Nightingale was winter 2011. So uh, first I'll just put this bag, and I won't go over all the features the way that I did because I did that in the previous video and I can put the link to that video in the um, video description. But I just would, thought I would put it on because I'm just loving this pattern so much, um, which was not um, a pattern I initially paid a lot of attention to. Um, I, I don't know. I, I didn't find it appealing. I'm not sure what exactly it was. Actually, it's better to see the, be able to see the pattern on this side because it doesn't have pockets, um, which is, I think, the main factor that's affecting pattern placement with this bag are those pockets on the front. Um, but the more I looked at this pattern, um, more interesting it became to me and, and I, I have mentioned that I'm in a, a Vera Bradley focus group and um, occasionally we get to see uh, potential patterns they just want input on patterns sometimes and uh, feedback and there was a pattern recently that sort of looked like this in the sense that there were some white areas mixed in with full color areas and my initial reaction was oh it looks unfinished but then the longer I, after, you know, I stopped, I had, it was days after that, um, I started to think about this pattern um, because it was similarly, that, that's a similar concept here. And I realized that I, I kind of think it's interesting. And it almost looks like a coloring book, areas of a coloring book that haven't been filled in yet. But in addition to that, what I like so much about it is the hand-drawn look, which I talk, I talk about a lot when I talk about patterns that I think I have an affinity for that. And so that was what, what I was going to focus on today with these three patterns, the others that I'll get to. But this really, I mean, just looks like it was, you know, uh, scribbled with magic marker, or pen and ink. The same thing with these, the lines and the, the lead, these particular leaves. And even the line, the rendering of the petals in these, within these color areas. Even the background you can see in the brown, it's a, it's a little bit harder to see, but there is black line work going on in the brown in this pattern. Uh, I tend not to gravitate towards brown, but this brown is a little bit darker and cooler than some of the other browns, and, and that's, so it, it's not as problematic for me. And it's... Uh, not the dominant color here, so uh, it, it works as a background color. I think it, it works with the other colors. I would say this light pink color is probably my least favorite part. And um, there were a couple of other quick draws in this pattern uh, on eBay, but I chose this one even though it was one of the more expensive ones. It was new with tags um, in addition. 
but it seemed to have the most of the deep red colors and the least of the light pink. The deep, deep pink is sort of this uh, hot pink kind of color and less of the light pink, which is the, the color I'm not crazy about. And so I went with this one for those reasons. Uh, it's also got nice coordinating trim here. And a nice uh, detail here about the trim is that it's split in half. The, the design of the bag has a sort of split on the top, it's on both sides. That's kind of nice. Um, probably works for adding flexibility when you cinch the drawstring part, I would imagine. So I'll just put it on, but then I will talk about the, the pockets <laughs> and the challenge I think that they create with pattern placement. But you can see this is a base, you know, this is, I, I, I'm just loving where it hits. Uh, it's comfortable. It's a good strap drop for me. Flowing out a little bit there. It's a little bit better. No, it's still blowing out. There we go. It's just a great bag, and I, I'm not going to play with a crossbody element of it now, but I did that in the other video. But um, I think this pattern, again, is sort of um, a little bohemian. And so I feel that it works with the less formal uh, design of this bag. Like, like the pattern and the bag style complement each other well. Same thing with the floral nightingale. As far as the pattern placement, however, and I, I think you, it's not, doesn't, it, was, it didn't uh, prevent me from getting this bag, but I do feel like this pattern, which it has a lot going on and a lot of overlap of the elements, when it's cut up, when the fabric is cut up into smaller pieces, there's more of a chance that those pieces will fight with each other, that they will uh, look like a mishmash of the pattern. And I, and I do feel like that's what happens here on the front of this bag a little bit. You got this deep pink here overla overlapping with this part of the background, you know, the pattern behind where there's pink. So this kind of merges. You lose it becomes very abstract. You lose the sense that these are big flowers because they're all cut up. You know, what, what's, what's going on with this strip here? You know, it, it's not so appealing as this, where everything sort of still looks neat and like it's conveying the pattern, even though it's cut up. And so I think that that's something to keep in mind if people are very concerned with pattern placement, that some patterns do fare better on the front of this bag than others. I just saw one online, I think the pattern was English Meadow, which is a very sweet uh, sort of light blue, light green, yellow, white kind of pattern. Small, very dense flower pattern. Um, very small flowers. And that one looked great on the front because no matter how small you cut up the pieces of fabric, you're not chopping up the pattern that egregiously like you are here. So uh, even though this kind of looks a little crazy here, a little messy here, I went with it though because it had other things that I wanted. The most deep pink, including up here, and the back too also. I liked the two big deep red, deep pink flowers there on the back, so I went with it. Um, I do have all my stuff in here, and um, so it works really well for me. I, I have my GPS, my charger cord pouch, and I'll take everything out because I want to put it in the packable tote. But I have all of it in here, fitting in here well. My, my wallet, which is the all-in-one crossbody, so it's a larger item, you know, thicker wallet. Um, like I said, GPS pouch, charger cord pouch, iPod, phone, um, iPad mini, all, all slip in there just fine. I think that the lining is nice here too on this 
um, pattern with the sort of daisy type flowers also looking hand rendered like they're drawn in there and the trim is pretty too so I definitely feel like I appreciate this pattern more um, now the thing that makes these other uh, items I want to talk about sort of related to, in my mind, is that they also all look hand-drawn. And not only just hand-drawn, but hand-drawn with a kind of a pen and ink uh, rendering. Uh, um, especially on this one, almost like, reminds me of comic book inks before the color has been laid down. If you're aware of the process, you know, you have a penciler who does the pencil on a comic book page, and then it goes to usually, I mean, there are some guys, mostly guys, but some women working the fields who do it all. They do the pencil, and they do the inking, and they do the coloring, or they do the pencil and the inking, and they send it off to the person who does the color. Um, but sometimes it's a different person doing each stage. Some Someone does the pencils, and someone does lays down the ink over, and then it goes for coloring. And so this pattern which is on the packable tote, is lavender bouquet. And it reminds me of that. I definitely looked at this and I thought, oh, God, it looks like comic book inking. And so I think that that's part of why these patterns are appealing to me, is that very pronounced look of it was hand done with black pen. And this, is, of course, is related to the lavender meadow. This is the packable version of it but with a different color palette, which is also nice. This is darker, and it has ladybugs. But this is a sort of a darker, less sweet um, color palette, which I, which I like very much. So the dark gray background really changes, uh, changes the feel of it. You get the periwinkle blue kind of color and the lavender color on the dark gray opens up and I was very worried, I, I packed well, folded well, I have opened it and repacked it, but it came pretty well folded. And I was concerned that I wouldn't get any ladybugs, or not good ladybugs, and I'm going to want to return it, but I got great ladybugs, better than the product shop on the website. <laughs> so I was very pleased. Got um, two on that panel, one here, two on this other side panel there and like uh, like with lavender meadow they are different they're not all one style of ladybug some have the wings open they're on different parts of the plants so so you can see I, I won't go over the features too much but this is configured like the um, iconic Vera tote with a slip pocket on the front and then a zipper pocket on top of that slip pocket but the zipper is a soft plastic zipper which is great and the back is just, you know, the straps and the fabric. You can see the uh, more ladybugs there all over the place. But I think you can see it just has sort of a more, I think almost a more sophisticated look because of the color palette. And even the straps are this nice, dark, inky gray. It's a very pretty gray. It's a very sophisticated, kind of sexy gray. So it's a good neutral. It's very sort of luscious looking, and that's be probably also because of the this particular material is very slick and shiny and soft, soft. So what I found, and I'm going to put all my stuff in here, I was carrying this the other day to the supermarket. I thought, well, it was new, and let me just give it a shot. And I, you know, when I had used the, um, my Super Bloom, my uh, scattered Super Bloom version of this, I had found it was what I had put in the bag was very lightweight and I, I found the straps slipped off my shoulder the outer strap especially slipped off my shoulder a lot but like I said in my first video I don't care because I just am so in love with that pattern <laughs> but when I went to the supermarket carrying this I had a lot of stuff loaded up in here the stuff that I normally put in my bag plus I had a sweatshirt which I pulled out here because I always get freezing in the supermarket and so there was a lot of stuff in here, and I had absolutely no problem with the straps. It stayed in place. And so I'm thinking it has something to do with the weight of the, of the contents of the bag. And so when there was more weight on my shoulder, it helped keep the straps in place. And so I just thought I would put everything in here and put it on, and people can 
see it. I mean, you have to take my word for it. I'm not going to be walking around too much. But <laughs> so this is my charger cord pouch. What I'm using for my wallet, all in one crossbody. My uh, oop, my GPS pouch. iPad mini. I just, you know, there's no interior organization like I've said in the other video, so I just dump everything in. I did have this in a tech, I didn't pull out a tech case, but I did have this in a, a tech case because I wanted it a little bit more protected and, some, and a bag that's not quilted with no slip pockets. So that took up a little bit more space too. My phone. And so then I had just, you know, this thrown on top. And so it was a lot of weight, you know, more than just the package that I had in it, which was just like a tote bag I was returning to the outlet store. So, you know, the bottom sags a little bit, but it's not too bad if you've got, you know, sort of an even... Uh, dispersal of the weight in there and it just stays on now I mean I, I didn't have any problem I do have a tendency still to put the inner strap on the over the outer strap like that but I really felt like I didn't have as much of a problem when there was more weight in the bag <laughs> I'm trying to not have the pattern blow out so much because it's so pretty So I think, you know, it, it definitely looks less sweet than here. It's a good comparison. I realize I had this out. So here's the, the Lavender Meadow, the quilted cotton version of this. It really, uh, you, you, don't, you don't have any of this pink going on in here. That also is probably contributing to that. And there's no green. I mean, this is definitely more monotone. I mean, there's... There's purple and periwinkle in here, but then the leaves are just black and white. Um, there, there are areas where there's no color laid down. That's actually an interesting thing to see up close, I feel like. Still the ladybugs, no bees, but there are ladybugs. <laughs> So I was just very pleased with this, both from the pattern standpoint and, and from the use standpoint when it's weighted, it's got more weight in it. And the bag, it's not, you know, the bottom's not looking too, too bad. It's not looking too awkwardly saggy. It's not perfect, but, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't have a base. So I, again, I definitely recommend this uh, fabrication. I, I like it a lot. I, I'm definitely thinking about what else could I get this pattern in, which again was uh, lavender bouquet. Just really quick, the dimensions on this are nine and a quarter, or nineteen and a quarter by fourteen and a half by six inches deep. So that's the packable tote. And then, you know, you can see, let's see the back. There's just this kind of similar. Hard to get them both up here. The similar look in the rendering where there's areas of just black and white and it definitely looks hand sketched. Um, and, and the lavender bouquet in particular, in particular to me, just there's something about right here, this kind of rendering right here reminds me very much of comic book inking and the way they lay down shading sometimes in a comic book, especially the older comic books uh, when the, back in the day, maybe before they were um, doing a lot of computer generated stuff. I just think it's, it's, it's a very neat pattern. Um, and then, now I had this in my video yesterday, but I had been looking at it more and this also has a, to me, falls in that same category 
where there, it just it just has a hand drawn look, and it's very interesting to me, and that's what's appealing about about this to me. I'm trying to <laughs> trying to get the best light. Um, now look at the lines in the leaf there. Yeah, that all looks hand done. This flower here, the light is coming in from my bathroom. There. So it's it's very it definitely looks like to me, this in particular, looks very much like uh, magic marker line work. Here again, very much like that, where there's um, broken up line work here, you know, in the in those in the center, you know, or overlapping line work. And so, to me, these patterns are very related because of that, because of the rendering. This is very interesting too, this this one, this one that looks like thistle. Anything that looks like thistle, I, I, I think is very interesting. So you can see again, just, just looks like inky um, indigo colored magic marker laid on top of the pink colors that are put down first and then you do your, your detail line work on top of on top of those tones. So for me, I think that's why these particular patterns, oh, I'm sorry, Dookie. <laughs> that's why these particular patterns all are uh, kind of irresistible to me. And I definitely feel like I could uh, depending on the bag style, I could definitely go to town with this one. I think bag style is important though for it to not look dated, and I think that this too dated. And I do think that this particular style, the bucket kind of look of this, like I said in my other video about this, it, it ages well. It doesn't get too dated looking. And um, so I think it's a good counterbalance to a pattern that might look a little bit more dated and I think this one can look a little bit more dated depending on the style of the bag. It reminds me of the, f the patterns that used to be used on the kind of that fabric, vinyl kind of coated fabric that used to be used on plush deck chair cushions back in the day. We used to get those heavy deck chairs made out of wood, uh, sturdy wooden frame and they used to have these very plush uh, pillows for the back and the seat. And they had this sort of water resistant, um, almost vinyl like uh, coated, like a coated fabric so that they could be left outside and be water resistant. And those patterns, I love those retro patterns. Those patterns, this reminds me of those patterns. A lot of big, loud flowers overlapping. Um, with line work, it had, usually had some line work incorporated into the design of the pattern. So I think that that might be why this is appealing to me so much is for bringing back good memories for me, beach memories for me. <laughs> anyway, so that was my my video for the day. Just to talk quick, uh, just compare the pattern placement a little bit on the quick draw bags um, as it relates to these, you know pockets which have a lot of different pieces of fabric on them like I mentioned in the other um, video I mean there's this there's this strip on top and there's this you know flap on the bottom where the magnet is and that this whole thing is a flap um, and then there's the pocket the base of the pocket so those are all small pieces and if the pattern is cut up awkwardly they may fight with each other, as I do a little bit here, I think, but I overlook it. But it was even worse on some other bags and other patterns that, that I saw. So anyway, but, but in general, I just love these patterns because they all look to me hand done, and, and, and that's 
definitely a weakness for me. If it looks like an artist drew something, <laughs> I'm all over it. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and hopefully see you next time.